You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. In the waters of baptism, our sisters Saturnina died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. channel 
There's despair in life, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, only light. And where there's sadness, ever joy. Oh, Master, grant that I may never seek so much to be spray. Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again, mercifully granted through this mystery your servant Saturnina had fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. You may be seated and let's listen to the readings. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On the mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples. The web that is woven over all nations, he will destroy forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears of all faces. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad he has saved us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in the newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, sweet Lord. Please stand. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowd, everything that the Father gives me will come to me and I will not reject anyone who comes to me because I came down from heaven not to do my own will but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything that he gave me, but that I should raise it on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise him on the last day. My dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord.
in behalf of the Holy Family Parish Church, I'd like to extend my condolences to the family of Saturnina Mercado, uh, for Michael, Gilbert, Gregorio, and Marita, and their spouses and their children. And um, we take time right now to remember her in our prayers during this holy sacrifice of the Mass. And part of our Christian duty as a community is to share this moment of faith. Whenever we look at the reason why we have our Mass for today, uh, of course, the, the Christian thing to do is to pray for the repose of the soul of our dear sister. However, the Mass is also intended for those who are left behind. And it is a time for us to be able to weigh things before the Lord and to understand and ponder in our heart what this would mean for all of us. And the death of a person, of course, is something that creates a vacuum in our hearts. And that's, um, I think that's perfectly understandable. No matter what people will say, at the moment of losing somebody who is dear, and, uh, and it's just a few days after her birthday, when she passed away. I know that this is a moment of sadness uh, for many of you. And I remember one of my classmates who lost his wife. He, he told me that um, no matter what people will say during the funeral rites, these words will just pass through his head because there is a feeling of emptiness whenever people would pass away. And that's understandable. That's perfectly understandable if you feel sadness, loss, and emptiness deep inside. However, our gospel reading for today reminds us that, yes, it may be for a time, but let us not hold on to this forever. Let the hope of our Christian faith shine through. We all know that our dear Saturnina was somebody who has faith as an important facet of her life. Her greatest legacy, of course, is an example of deep prayer. Uh, I heard that she is, a, as a person, even though she is a, a well-accomplished person, she's a doctor, but she is unpretentious. She's somebody who really takes prayer as a central part of her life. And that is something that we hold on to and remember that she is indeed somebody who has the promises of the Lord deeply embedded in her heart. Sometimes, indeed, when we look at events like these, we can't find any deep reason to hold on to, but we know that the reasons are there. Aside from the reassurance of the Lord, we all know that wisdom comes in time. Uh, whenever uh, one uh, favorite example of mine, uh, whenever we look at moments of deep loss, is uh, photography. Uh, for example, right now, of course, photography seems to be a bad example right now because whenever we want to take a picture, we whip out our phones take a picture and instantly that same photograph can be sent all over the world. But there was a time where in, uh, whenever we take pictures, it takes time before it gets developed. Um, the fastest, of course, will be a Polaroid camera. But whenever you take a Polaroid picture, still, even though it's uh, the fastest that we had before the digital age, the first thing that still comes out is a blank sheet of paper. So if we can identify right now with that blank sheet of paper, we don't find any pattern, we don't find any meaning or reason, the Lord invites us today in the spirit of the hope 
that we are given in our readings for today. That if you just wait, if we allow God to work, pictures, patterns, colors, and meaning will come out. And maybe in our time of grief, let us find reassurance that if we wait, then the answers will come. Once again, my condolences to the family. Please stand for our prayers and petitions. In baptism, Saturnina received the light of Christ, scatter the darkness now, and lead them over the waters of death. And for every prayer and petition, we shall say, Lord, hear our prayer. Our sister Saturnina was nourished at the table of our Savior. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them everlasting home with your son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all those whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The family and friends of Saturnina seek comfort and consolation, heal their pain, and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our sister Saturnina. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. And God our Father, we raise to you our voices in confidence and faith for the repose of the soul of our sister Saturnina and the comfort of her loved ones. And all of these petitions we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. may be seated.
my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be near, O Lord, we pray, to your servant Saturnina, on whose funeral day we offer you the sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to her, or any human fault have affected her, it may be by your loving gift be forgiven and wiped away to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone, he accepted death so that we might all escape from dying. As one man, he chose to die so that in your sight we all might live forever. So in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. indeed holy O Lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, and with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, <coughs> deliver us, Lord, we pray every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ Lord Jesus Christ who said to your apostles peace I leave you my peace I give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, we live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. So for each other, silent peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servant Saturnina, who has journeyed from this world, may by this sacrifice be cleansed and freed from sin, and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's be seated and listen for a eulogy from the family. told I was supposed to use this one. <laughs> so, um, uh, good morning everybody and thank you for being here um, to celebrate my mom's life. Uh, I, I first do want to acknowledge uh, everybody's uh, work uh, to bring this together. Um, my sister did the beautiful programs and she actually managed most of the stuff in terms of uh, the photo arrays, the uh, PowerPoint presentation, uh, the after internment uh, meal. Uh, so, and uh, I was taking care of everything with regard to the mass. Um, all my sisters, all my my sisters-in-law were also, you know, present to put together all the photos. Uh, the collage, uh, the montages, uh, the, the display boards. Um, so, and I do want to thank all our pallbearers here, uh, my uh, relatives and uh, cousins, or my, my sons and my my brother, and uh, a brother-in-law, a future brother-in-law. <laughs> so, anyway, I did, you know, just want to acknowledge all that, uh, Anthony, also with all the work my one brother-in-law is uh, uh, putting a lot of work so thank you to everybody uh, oh and uh, our novena uh, we had every night uh, you know for the nine nights um, after uh, her passing uh, so uh, and everybody who was present for that uh, I thank you heartfelt thank you for everybody um, uh, <coughs> uh, excuse me about that. So, it. I just wanted to say, you know, she, you know, she did, she did pass, uh, but she's here today. I mean, just present in terms of uh, the way this mass started, right? I mean, she's never been early to an appointment, so she's never been early to going to her office. I've had many, uh, many a call from uh, my. Auntie Corey saying, where's your mom? Where's your mom? <laughs> there are patients here already. So having a, a service that starts a little later, she's here with us. She's here with us. Okay? So that's what I just want you guys to know. That's, that's, that's definitely here. All right? But like, you know, it's not how you start though, right? It's how you finish. It's how you finish. And so I just wanted to say that too. So she had such a, a memorable life. But let's start at the beginning, okay? So I just wanted to kind of go over this with you guys. Um, oh, the obituary, I forgot to mention my, my brother, uh, Gilbert, who spent uh, quite a bit of time on this, uh, on, on this and uh, not to mention, I, I did make some changes, but he did write most of it and I just wanted to make sure I, you know, uh, bring him up because he did write the obituary. So our mother is Saturnina de Leon Mercado, known as Nina. She passed away <coughs> on the evening of uh, December 2 at uh, the age of uh, 88. So we were all around her uh, at that time. Um, she, she was born on uh, November 28, 1934 in Bacor, Cavite. And unbeknownst to me until lately, is she was in really the second oldest of seven children. 
um, the first and third brothers didn't survive past infancy. Uh, so it made her de facto the oldest of five surviving children. Okay. Her parents, uh, Severino and Adriana de Leon, um, she did lose uh, her sister's uh, Auntie Durang, Theodora, um, and Benita, both of them in 2021. Uh, her father, also, my, my dad also passed away in 2016. <clears throat> Mom has two surviving siblings. One of them is here today. Um, uncle, little boy, or uncle, uncle boy, and or Uncle Juanito, and Eugenio is in the Philippines. Um, there's, we have, uh, there's four of us siblings. Myself, my wife Ellen is there, uh, Marita, uh, husband Anthony, Gilbert, uh, wife Nancy, and Greg, uh, uh, wife Rosalind. Uh, the nine grandchildren, I hope I put this in the right order um, in terms of when they first uh, joined, the, joined the world here. Lauren, Garrett, uh, Victoria, Gavin, Matthew, Emily, Kalira, Madison, and uh, Naya. <clears throat> so, mom graduated from Manila Central University, a doctor with a specialty in obstetrics, gynecology. She started here actually as a staff physician at two different hospitals in the Philippines until she eventually opened her own clinic in our hometown of Bacbaran. She carved out a second office, uh, a smaller medical office, you know, uh, at the house where we stayed at. There's just enough room for an exam table, an office desk, and a waiting area. It was just a small corner. I would say it's no more than maybe 150 square feet. Not even, maybe, okay? And then she, you know, honed her craft, taking patients there. Um, some, some of them she would take who didn't have a means of paying. Now, this is a theme that continued all the way through uh, her career, is that she would take patients, uh, you know, who didn't have m a lot of means, maybe, and she would just take sometimes food in lieu of cash payment. You know, sometimes she would do that. Or, um, and, and I remember my dad, and, and she, she would, you know, get into our, uh, little discussions, disagreements about, about, you know, why are you taking that? Or, you know, you, you're not getting paid. You're not, you know, for, for your services. He goes, don't worry, they'll come back, they'll come back, they'll come back. So she already had a little bit of an idea of what like McDonald's was where, you know, you only charge a little bit, but you know, they're gonna keep coming back. So she knew, you know, to, to, to kind of build your, your business in that way and, 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 and the trust of the people around you. Well, you know, that, that exam table, I actually had a, uh, you know, I would say I contributed to her training because I was a patient a couple of times there myself. Um, I, I slid into the, the security gate head first and I uh, had 11 stitches here. Uh, so she fixed me on that table. And also at school, um, I hit one of the I-beam supports on the top of my head. And so I have about another 17 stitches here. So she, she had plenty of uh, uh, practice just on me, uh, for, you know, so. <clears throat> yeah, all kidding aside though, she had a, p a pension to provide services, like I said, to unser underserved communities. It just began way back then. She just, you know, she wanted to make sure she could provide services to people who, who, who probably could not afford it or, you know, so. Um, her business grew. Uh, we emigrated to the United States in, in 73. Uh, Dad didn't join us initially. He had to take care of some uh, business in the Philippines before he, he joined us. So we made the trip here with uh, three preteens and one 13-year-old. She's dragging us all over, you know, the airport. And I'm, you know, I've got, I don't know how many luggage I have to, you know, everyone is carrying a bag. and. Um, Mr. ADD here, I, I'm getting lost. I don't know which gate I'm gonna go. I was almost lost to you once or twice. So, you know, by the time we got there, it was, you know, it was tough for her. It was tough for her. 
you know, but that's courage there, right? Leaving your, hus your homeland and with a family of four without a guarantee that you would find a job and a, and a means to support your family. You just left everything behind just to see if you can start here, try to give us all a good life, right? Um, I think my, my Auntie Ethel and Uncle Gus, uh, they, were, uh, they petitioned for us, so they helped to support us. And let's stay with them. In the, initially, when we first got here in New York City, I mean, if you can imagine, they, they lived in a studio apartment. There was the three of them, and there was the four of us that came. So we're like sardine cans in the sardine can to start our life in New York City. Right? It was, it was amazing that we actually, you know, that we, we, we got that done. I mean, everybody had a little patience. My, you know, my aunts and uncles, and I, I thank them for that. And then uh, all of us just uh, finding room somewhere to sleep, you know, uh, and, and then get our life started here. So, and then we moved on to a larger apartment in Queens, and then to a bigger one after that, but you know. So mom's career began here in, the, a, hospi in a hospital in Bronx, New York. Um, so she was being assessed, you know, for her fitness to, to work as a doctor by, you know, um, by the director, the medical director there. While she was doing that, of course, she's studying for uh, exams during her off hours. But, you know, all the time, even though, um, by and large, we were latchkey kids, right? I mean, she was working most of the time, but she still made sure that we had home-cooked meals. Uh, you know, the groceries, uh, the fridge was still stacked. Um, we had to make our own uh, lunch for school if we had to. Uh, when I went away to high school, I'd have to make, pack my own lunch, but doesn't everybody anymore, right? We don't have to do that. We were latchkey kids through most of middle and high school. Um, but she, uh, you know, she was just, she was just great about that. So with regard, so while she was doing that, she did study for her, you know, uh, foreign licensing exam. Um, she didn't pass on the first time, right? Or even the second try. She didn't pass on, on two tries. And I remember how, how completely heartbroken she was the first time. I mean, I don't know, I, I, you know, I wake up in the middle of the night um, and then I go to the best room and she's just crying in the restroom. She's crying in the restroom because she didn't pass the boards and she was going, I don't know what's gonna happen to us. And I just kept telling, you know, you know just, just have faith too, you know. Have faith and keep working. I know you could do it. I know you could do it. And then when my dad came, you know, and showed us, you know, she, she just did great in her sections of the exam, which was the obstetrics and gynecology stuff. But some of the other sections, they failed. They, you know, they were just a little short. So she, you know, I just told her, just keep going, mom, just keep going. You wouldn't want me to stop, and so I don't want you to stop either. So I remember that. And then, you know, she finally, you know, with her perseverance and dogged determination, she was rewarded on that third try. So um, she passed that uh, in Vermont, and then was legal, you know, and then finally eligible to practice uh, in the U.S. By then, um, we moved to Nebraska in '77. Um, what she did was, uh, she, what she told me, is that. She was taking a full-time position as a uh, as a general practitioner in, in, in Nebraska. Instead of instead of uh, uh, she passed on a six-year residency in OBGYN in New York City. Well, partly because she didn't want to do residency for six years, another six years, and partly because the medical director who was petitioning was wanting her to to stay uh, uh, got into a horrible accident. So. She, you know, and, and passed away himself. So his, her support was not there anymore. So she ended up going um, to Nebraska. And, you know, so Nebraska was, was fantastic for us. She absolutely loved it, working there. Now, um, we always talk about people uh, in, uh, um, <coughs> you know, being uh, disadvantaged from an economic standpoint. Uh, Nebraska was much more different because what happens is 
these were disadvantaged in terms of temporal. You know, there was not a doctor within, you know, hundreds of miles sometimes, you know, uh, where you could see a doctor. So um, that's the, the type of disadvantage some of, those, some of the, uh, those folks out there were, and a good bunch of people they were. She would have stayed there in Nebraska, but, you know, um, the, you know uh, my, uh, all her relatives were on the east coast, on the west coast here. Uh, I would say we are bi-coastal in that way. Most of my dad's relatives were on the east coast. Most of my mom's relatives were on the west coast. Um, so, but we did move out to the west coast. Dad, uh, Dad's urging also, by the way, because he was going stir crazy in Nebraska, he told me. <laughs> he was going stir crazy in Nebraska. So she worked here in Long Beach for a while, saved enough money to fund and begin a private practice in Norwalk and in Bellflower, ultimately. Um, she was dedicated and a kind individual. I'm not sure if it's cultural, but on numerous occasions she would bring home food that patients brought for her. <laughs> um, you know, something that happened, I'm not sure if it's that way in the Philippines, but it's some sort of exchange for payment sometimes, or even just as a gratitude, you know. Ah. Oh, in, in Nebraska, she was, you know, so proud also. She delivered, I wanted to just tell you, she was proud of a couple of things. One of them was that she was always proud and always said that, you know, um, that whole graduating class when we were, uh, uh, what do you call it, alumni already, he said, that whole graduating class, I delivered that whole graduating class. <laughs> that's how small the, that's how small those classes were because I delivered that whole graduating class. She would tell me that, okay, and then, you know, and like, you know, and while, of course, she delivered thousands of babies here uh, in, in, um, in California, right? So her success provided means to affect change around her, okay? She didn't let success um, change her. She didn't let success change her. She was still that modest individual who didn't really speak loudly, you know, even though she was very proud and very, you know, uh, confident in her own, in her own right and in her own, you know, with, in her own body. She was just very confident in what she wanted to do. Um, she kept the trappings of her success. She didn't keep the trappings of her success to herself. She shared it and made a conscious choice to better the lives of her children, grand grandchildren, siblings. And then she also wanted to make sure to let you know that, you know, um, her, all her nephews and nieces and somewhere or other, she, you know, she, she uh, supported their further education. She was so proud that she helped putting all her nieces and nephews through college, some, you know, uh, partially or wholly, depends, you know. But I did want to share one thing. I remember, I don't know how many times we spent, and I was about, you know, really um, told her, you know, I don't want to hear the story anymore. <laughs> but, but I always heard it, right? But her proudest accomplishment still was, uh, you know, my brother, Greg. My brother, Greg. Okay, because um, she was always, you know, she's, you know, she always said, oh, Mike, he's, he's pretty good. Marita, she's great with, you know, she's awesome with what she did. She just, you know, look how, you know, she would always tell me. And, and Gilbert, he's just a savant. So he's just, <laughs> he's just the smartest kid around, right? But Greg, he goes, Greg, look what, look what, look what Greg did. He goes, you know, I mean, we wouldn't have, you guys would not have expected anything, but you know, <coughs> I, I pushed and I pushed and I pushed. And for his part, he listened. And now he's a nurse. He's a nurse. He goes, and he would always, she would always tell that to me. She would always say, you know, I am so proud of your brother. He is just so incredibly, he's just awesome. Could you imagine, you know, I mean, he probably would have ended up just playing tennis, uh, <laughs> playing tennis and trying to make money on, you know, gambled on the tennis court, you know, if I hadn't pushed him, <laughs> you know. But he was so incredibly proud of Greg. I don't remember, I don't know how many numerous times she used to, say that to me. She was absolutely proud of my brother, Greg. And I am too, okay? I don't have to say it. I am. Oh, and there were those year-end parties for patients or staff and Bellwood personnel. Um, 
like late in her career. Uh, so she used to, you know, she took to giving thanks to the Lord by throwing these celebrations in the parking lot of the building where she worked. <clears throat> um, I think it was all hands on deck for all the family actually, you know, okay, so. Um, and we did, you know, it was hectic initially when we first started because, you know, my dad and I would go out and, you know, rent a truck to grab the tables and the chairs and do the, all the setup prior to that. But then we started hiring, you know, the people to put tents up and everything else, so, and, then, and then the food. But initially it was just us, right? It was mostly us. You know, but it was, like I said, it was a, a labor of love. It was a labor of love. Um, we all got enlisted to do those setups for the first few parties, then um, cooking. Um, and the party was not, you know, for her, but it was for all the children that she delivered, the parents, her patients. She was always ecstatic to see the children and delivered, that she delivered and, and watched them grow over the years. Um, she delivered actually a, a few mothers who then became mothers of other pa babies. So she delivered the mother and the baby both. Um, that's how, you know, how she was. She worked into her late 70s. And that schedule only changed when my dad um, fell ill and suffered strokes which you know, first left him partially immobile and ultimately bedridden. She hired help for my dad during her work hours um, you know, to assist with getting, you know, and, then, um, and then at night she would have most myself, sometimes Greg uh, and Anthony once in a while too, uh, to help him get in and out of bed or you know, when, when he was still kind of partially mobile. And then uh, when he was completely disabled, you know, mom would be by his side you know, as we prepared him for bed. So <clears throat> the one thing that I think she would have wanted is, is she would have been to travel with dad and they didn't have that you know, because of his affliction. They did make it out to Lourdes in France once and she did make it to the Philippines to visit uh, with her siblings and to my grandmother's funeral also. But you know, she just didn't want to take any other trips without my dad by her side. So, she, you know, she was just that committed to him. Um, she loved her animals, her garden. Oh my gosh, she had a great garden. And then those, those uh, oranges, by the way, I did bring it up to everybody that, who was there you know, sometimes for the novena. She had a, a, a bunch of seeds that uh, she got from my uh, Lola Kunching in the Philippines, and and she saved those. I don't know how long she's had them, and uh, when when we moved into that house in in Cerritos, she planted it, and those are the seeds. Those are the fruit from from the seeds that she brought from the Philippines in '73 still, and we have that that fruit, that fruit from Lola Kunching. So that was amazing to me. I mean, the the background, the backyard is fantastic: pomegranates, oranges, persimmon. Mangoes, cherry moya. She didn't listen to us, by the way, but Uncle Boy started pruning the cherry moya tree, and now we're getting huge fruit. Do you get that, Mom? Did you hear that? Now that we pruned the tree, now we're getting bigger fruit. <laughs> so uh, I just wanted to say, um, in passing, I just wanted to say, Doc, she, my, my mom, she was devoutly Catholic, uh, the last few years of her life, um, I would be always getting up in the morning um, to begin my work day. And I knew like at five o'clock, I knew at five o'clock I had to turn my, the TV off from whatever I was watching, Sports Center or whatever it was I was watching before I went to work. But at five o'clock it was always on Eternal Word television to watch, to, to take morning mass take morning mass. So every day she did that uh, until, until you know, she couldn't do it anymore, okay? Um, I don't know what else to say. She's just an awesome, awesome individual parent, a grandmother. And actually for us, I, I think, you know, I feel sad for everybody, everybody else, of course, because well, we benefited from her, you know, you know, all the people, all the patients, and all the 
won't have her support anymore. Won't have her. So to me, that you know, I feel so I feel sad for everybody also. Thank you. Please all stand. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. To you, Lord, we commend the soul of Saturnina, your servant, in your sight. In the sight of this world, she is now dead. In your sight, may she live forever. Forgive whatever sin she committed through human weakness, and in your goodness, grant her everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. We will conclude our services at the gravesite. Let's now take our sister to her place of rest. joy. 